shall we turn our bibles to Ephesians chapter 3 verses 7 to 13 and i have titled my message as servants of the mystery let's read it together by god's grace and mighty power i have been given the privilege of serving him by spreading this good news though i am the least deserving of all god's people he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in christ i was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that god the creator of all things had kept secret from the beginning god's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places this was his eternal plan which he carried out through Christ Jesus our lord because of Christ and our faith in him we can now come boldly and confidently into god's presence so please don't lose heart because of my trials here i am suffering for you so you should feel honored hallelujah you know couple of weeks back we heard from a man of god who said this is the lighthouse if you are the lighthouse and the lighthouse should have a rescue plan the lighthouse not only shows light to the ship or the people who are going through uh, troubles but they also will have a rescue plan as well they will go out and help they will have something you know some provisions to go out and help the people who are in trouble similarly the lord expects you and me to be prepared to be ready to be a witness for him in the name of jesus christ god's plan of salvation he fulfills he uses even us also for what to help others to let others hear about it he already did it now it's our responsibility to go out and speak this good news to others you know, i just heard a man of god say one time the gospel is called the good news and he said you know why it is called good news oh because it is too good to be true you know just think about it a person who died on the cross and when you believed on that you receive your salvation it's too good to be true to believe in a person who died on the cross and resurrected for you and me just to believe on that person gives you eternal life is it too good to be true brothers and sisters that's our god that's our jesus christ that's our creator yeah last week and also we heard from our pastor uh, safari paul we heard that god makes each one of us who were not part, not part of his family to be partakers of the promises of god and god makes us partakers of his promises through a mystery a mystery is something which was hidden from uh, everyone for a long time now what is a mystery the greek word for mystery is mysterian i and i struggle you know to read that word actually how do i read it now what is mystery which means you know something that is beyond our natural ability to understand but revealed by divine interpretation there's something hidden in the scriptures but it is revealed to you and me by the powerful powerful presence of the holy spirit apostle paul used that word mystery to say that there was something hidden before but now it is revealed to every one of us just think about it why it is revealed to us or how it is revealed to us Paul himself said in the book of Corinthians that today we have the mind of Christ and who can know the heart of God only those who have the mind of Christ can understand the heart of God we have the mind of Christ and he reveals his plans to us so Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 says the day you believed in him he sealed you and me with the promise of the holy spirit and that holy spirit who lives in us and through us reminds us of everything that Jesus Christ taught here in this world if you have not accepted him as your lord and savior brothers and sisters let me tell you you are missing out on so many things you are missing out the joy of being in love with jesus christ spending time with him 
You know, I remember, you know, the days before I got saved. I used to be like any other person. But, you know, after I have experienced Jesus Christ in my life, my whole life changed. Earlier when I sit down to read the word of God, the Bible, you know, one or two verses, and then you feel like, you know, ah, you want to sleep. You're bored. But, you know, as you come, grow in that relationship with him, you find, you know, the, the song we sing, you know, your word is like honey, it's sweeter than honey. And you start experiencing, experiencing the sweetness in the word of God. You start seeing the riches in the word of God. You start seeing him move in your life in a very special way. So this morning, let me just remind you, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, make it a point that you will in, invite him into your life and you will go out of here as a different person. Amen? So what is a mystery? Or I would say, what is the mystery? We heard about the mystery last week. The mystery is God's plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. Available, which is available not only to the Jews, but even to the Gentiles. Because, you know, there was a time when uh, the people who thought they, were, they belonged to God, they thought it is their inheritance, it's their right. But, this, but the, Jesus Christ came and said, this is available to everyone. The scripture very clearly says, God so loved the whole world that if anyone who believes in him, it is open to everyone. The only condition is that you and I need to believe in what Jesus Christ did. It is open to everyone. So the mystery is God's plan of salvation through Jesus Christ, which is available to Available not only to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles also. Ephesians 3 verse 6 says like this, Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Now, how did God accomplish his plan? Oh, you need to read the Bible to understand that clearly. Ephesians chapter 2 gives a very good illustration of that or, or description of that. Very clearly, Ephesians chapter 2 says how it all happened. We who were away from God, we thought, you know, our life can lead us to salvation. You know, that time, Apostle Paul, who wrote the book, you know, he called you and me, who did not come into the fold of Jesus Christ. He called us, you know, who were dead in sins and trespasses. Oh, those days you were dead in your sins and trespasses. But God took you out of that situation and he brought you into his presence and he molded you and he ch changed, changed you around. He gave you new, new life. And then he says like this, you know, it is not because of something you have done. It is the grace of God. The grace of God gave you salvation and therefore you should not boast about it. There's nothing we can say that it's because of my prayers. It's because of something which I have done. I have received this salvation. And you know what God said, you know, to those whom he saved. He's the one who changed us, turned us around. Who may, he made us a new creation. Then he said, they are my masterpiece. This is my masterpiece. They did not do it by themselves, but I did it. I paid for it. I struggled for it. I gave my life. And through that, I gave them a new life. I made them into a new person. They are my masterpiece. How many masterpieces of God are here this morning? Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Now let's see the, the benefits of that mystery. What did we receive from that mystery? Ephesians chapter 2, 15. I'm just only touching certain things. I'm not going into everything. But let's see. That mystery brought us peace. It, it brought peace between the Jews and the Gentiles. The people who thought, you know, they belonged to God, they looked on, on, on others. Why? Because they were not under the, the covenant of circumcision. Oh, we are under this covenant of circumcision. Or like, you know, the, the, the Samaritan woman who said, you know, how can you say all this? We have great leaders. We have great fathers. And you say you are the one who is worshipping the Lord truly. We worship the Lord in that place and this place. We can go to that place and every kind of religious place and worship God. But Jesus said, lady, a time is coming when you don't have to go there and here. You don't have to run around to worship the Lord. 
the time is coming when he will be living in your heart and you can just lift up your hand and experience his presence a transformation that happened in our lives hallelujah blessed be the name of jesus christ it says you know the people of god people who did not know god were enemies of god and they were enemies of the jews as well but jesus christ the sacrifice of jesus christ brought peace between them ephesians chapter 2 verse 15 then it says you know jews and gentiles became part of one body the peace that brought them together formed them into a new entity called christians that faith in jesus christ made you and me a christian and we became part of one body oh the next one it says you know because of our faith in jesus christ we became the members of god's family we are adopted even though we did not believe i mean we belong to that family he adopted us into that family you know when we, we, when a child is adopted into a family the person who adopts signs a, a certain documents and on that document it says you know one of the condition will be like you know now from now onwards everything i have will belong to this child as well because i have adopted it adopted that child if you have been adopted into the family of god every blessings of god belongs to you as well we have been accepted into the family of god we have become his mom family oh this is the best part you know we have become the temple of god through our relationship with jesus christ we have become the temple of god think about this what is a temple the first thing or oh, let's say what is a church or what is a place of worship that is where we come together gather together and lift up the name of jesus christ let's say look at the, uh, the temple like this temple is a place where prayer goes on that's place where people gather together to worship the lord hallelujah in other words i would like to say our life should be a life of worshiping god every moment Sami said like this I'll worship the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth a temple is a place where the praise and worship of the Lord goes up and always then through that what happened we became the dwelling place of God we have become the children of God because he has made his residence in our hearts You know, there is a wonderful verse in the book of uh, Romans which says like this, every creation is waiting to see the revelation of the sons of God. Who all are the true children of God? Because everything is going through decay. But there is a day coming when uh, the decay will be gone. Everything will be made perfect. And the, and the entire creation of God is looking to see who truly are the children of God. see and I, when i said in the beginning we are the lighthouse and the tri- lighthouse should have a rescue plan and we all are in that plan actually you know that rescue team we all are in that that is why jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every one that is your responsibility and my responsibility to step out of our comfort zone share the good news to someone talk to somebody amen So what does this mystery teach us? Yeah, look at this. Read through it. It very clearly says, we have become the children of God. We became the children of God through our faith in Jesus Christ. Number two, we have put on Christ through baptism. And Christ lives in us. It is no longer we live. it is christ who lives in us and through us we need to realize that what happens we have been totally changed everything we do we have to be careful because it's not us living it is christ who lives in us we are no longer jews or gentile we are not strangers anymore we have become the children of god or oh, the fourth one we are one in christ we became the members of one body and one family hallelujah every middle wall of separation was that was there has been removed we have been brought together into the same family number 
we belong to jesus christ now by your faith in what happened on the cross we belong to jesus christ now which means we are adopted into the family of god number 6 we became the true children of abraham oh if you are his children then you are his heirs as well number 7 we became the heirs of abraham as well number 8 it says because we became the children of abraham and his heirs every promise god made to abraham belongs to you and me as well our identity has been totally changed our situation has been totally changed we need to realize that that god had a great plan and he has placed you and me in that plan for certain purposes there are certain things he expects you and me to do with our life let's go into the our portion today the next slide ephesians chapter 3 7 to 13 so i when i went through it i saw three things there verses 7 to 9 talks about one thing and then 10 to 11 talks about another thing and Uh, 12 and 12 and 13 talks about another thing verses verse 7 says that we are called to be a minister now now who can be a minister everyone who has received the great commission is a minister of god in other words we can say we are authorized we are authorized to share the gospel we are authorized to share the mystery go into all the world again i am repeating that this is a reminder to us go into all the world and preach the gospel we are made a minister of god you know when paul wrote like this you know i have been uh, i am called as a as a minister we have a saying in, in malayalam you know i come from kerala where we speak malayalam god's own country <laughs> we speak malayalam we say you know run after somebody and get them into that fold in malaya i think there are many malayalis here we say odichittu pidikya you know paul was running away from god he was doing what he liked but god went behind him because he knew and he saw him from before he laid the foundation of the world and took him and changed him around and used him for the glory of his name so everyone who has received the gospel is you know a minister so suppose you know you have you have you see you know like you know people persecuting there's a lot of persecution happening all around the world for the sake of gospel even that is happening in india in and in at a high level for the sake of gospel but you know the the day is coming the people who are persecuting those who are ministering those who are serving the lord they will come to the saving grace of jesus christ the day is coming and it's very coming very soon i remember uh, there's a man of god who was preaching in the northern part of india and because he was sharing the gospel the religious people who were there they turned against him he was living in a rented house and one day the ma- the owner of the house came and told this man you know you need to vacate this place because you are speaking about a, a, a foreign uh, god we don't know that god so you need to get out of that place he said okay we'll go but can we arrange organize a prayer meeting in our house for the last time before we leave he said all right go ahead and do it that day he, there was a meeting going on in the house it was evening time it was raining heavily outside it's a true story okay raining heavily and the prayer was going on in the house in the middle of the night he heard someone knocking at the door and he opened the door and he saw his landlord standing there ah uh, sir what happened we will leave the, we will vacate the house tomorrow he said no don't go go out of this place you remain here because as we were sitting down to have our dinner today we had an and we had an encounter with jesus christ he came and told us do not touch my servant let him stay there the day is coming those who are standing against the gospel will turn to jesus christ this man stayed there in that house for long and later on the landlord gave him that house at a very less rate as well and now that became a one of the first churches in that village in the northern part of india glory be to the name of jesus 
so the greek word for minister is called uh, diakonao oh again i struggled you know to read that word for me i read it like you know diakonio <laughs> then i started thinking what is it then i went and try to understand the true word and then i saw the real meaning and the real pronunciation is diakonao which means a servant or a deacon remember if you are a minister you are a servant you are a deacon of god which a servant means you know someone who has the ability to see the needs in the church and serve as needed one who cares for the needs of others and 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 as the lord leads imagine just think about it. if someone comes and calls you a servant what is what will be your reaction i remember you know many years back when i was a, a, a part of another church one day you know someone came and told me brother you need to help in uh, distributing coffee oh my ego was hurt how can i <laughs> how can i me george how can i distribute coffee i mean coffee i think gave coffee to others how dare he ask me all these things but the day coming the day came when the lord humbled me and he told me you are nothing george oh there was an, i had an experience one time i will not go into that experience i was standing there like you know i am somebody that through that experience it was like in a, a, a balloon bursting what happens when a balloon burst book the whole the everything is gone i became like nothing at that moment i realized that moment god is the one who lifts up a person the god is the one who pulls down another person if you are not someone who is not careful when you are put into a place or position of responsibility especially in the presence of the lord be careful brothers and sisters the day is coming so be careful prepare yourself equip yourself so that you can be a true child of god a true servant of god so don't be uncomfortable when someone uh, calls you a servant of god we are called to be a servant jesus himself said i did not come to be served but i came to serve others and that is the reason why paul said it's a privilege for me to be called a servant of god if uh, ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 very clearly says paul very clearly says i consider it a privilege i have been given the privilege of serving him by spreading the good news it's a privilege to serve the lord paul described you know the qualifications of of a servant in first timothy he said you know like you know a, a, a servant of god should be selfless should not be self centered he should be respectable hospitable able to teach he should be gem- gentle and should have a good reputation as well hope you remember you know when we were talking on the day of our fathers day we talked about the qualifications of of a priest or of a leader in a family there we talked about you know about holiness and being blameless if you are a servant of god you are expected to be holy you are expected to be blameless what is the meaning of holy and 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 blameless holiness is between you and god it is between you and god be holy as just just as i am holy but whereas being blameless between you and the people around you there should be nothing in your life that people will point fingers at you and say oh this man is like that this man is not good he is not a true child of god how can he be a minister of god we have to be careful because we have been set apart for the glory of his name it's no longer we live but it is christ who lives in us and through us everything and anything we do we have to be careful because we should never bring shame to the name of jesus christ so paul was aware of his past life and that is why he said i was worst of the sinners now he says you know i am an apostle of the gentiles i am the apostle to the gentiles and he knew he did not deserve it that is why he said it's a privilege to serve god i have been given the privilege and he then he said you know it is the grace of god who made me a minister remember this grace of god makes you and me a minister of god now what is grace grace is the undeserved 
favor of god something which we did not deserve but he gave us because god considered you and me worthy and therefore he extended his grace towards us through jesus christ so that we can be the ministers of that grace again why i am sharing all this remember that first line over there we are authorized to share the mystery we have been given the responsibility of sharing the gospel if you are thinking you know you are better than others who oh, i can do the work of the lord better than anyone else let me just remind you that is not because of anything which you did it was the grace of god made you stand on this pulpit i should be aware of that the grace of god there are many who can speak better than me there are many who are uh, uh, qualified than me but god had the grace upon me to put me on this pulpit so that i can share the scripture with you the word of god with you every one of us are calling in our lives but there is a warning also in here you know don't promote yourself at that time don't think that you are high you are you know it's because of your ability that you are there on that pulpit proverbs chapter 11 verse 2 says if you are prior proud about you know about your ministry and what you are doing remember this pride leads to disgrace a time comes when you will be pulled down if you try promoting yourself you think you know if you say oh it's because of me it's because of i am all this there's a day coming then you will be pulled down put down pride leads to disgrace again let's go to the next slide why are we made the ministers or why are we authorized to share the good news or why are we made the ministers to spread this good news verse 7 says we are instructed we are given the authority or the order to spread this good news to others next slide please verse 8 says we have to tell the gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in christ there are blessings hidden in christ and that's what we reveal you know to others what that's what we tell others spread good news tell others verse 9 says explain to everyone that you and i are placed as a teacher of the word of god we have to explain that truth to others we have to spread we have to tell and we have to teach others as well we are authorized to share the good news to others amen hallelujah go to the next slide please so if you are authorized just as uh, apostle luke says like this you know if god has been generous with you he expects you to serve him as well next slide please it's like you know the say the, like we say you know having received love show love having received mercy show mercy having received forgiveness show forgiveness having received grace be gracious authorized to share what you have received you know there is a wonderful scripture in uh, in the book of corinthians it's in the book, second book of corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 says like this it's not the wording but i am just i just paraphrase it in my way the glory of god that was on the face of jesus christ is revealed into our hearts so that we can reflect that glory to others we are authorized to share that mystery the glory of god that is on the face of jesus christ is revealed into our hearts so that we can reflect that glory to others if you are the lighthouse you should have a rescue plan as well lighthouse not only reflects light lighthouse should have a rescue team as well and the team goes out and follows up on the people who are in distress and we are made part of that uh, that follow up team to go and talk to others speak blessings to others encourage them to be a blessing in the life of many others amen number 2 the purpose of revealing that ministry is a sort of that mystery the purpose is to god's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places and this was his eternal plan which he carried out through christ jesus our lord again back to what we have been saying the body of christ is set apart to display the greatness of god in this world 
Now there is a word, you know, mentioned there, to rulers or the principalities and powers. What is the meaning of principalities? It is referring to the, the evil powers in the air. Or the, we can say like, you know, the angels and the demons. Who thought, you know, by killing Jesus Christ on the cross, they thought they have won. They, they have taken over. But the true mystery was not revealed to them, but it is revealed to you and me because we have the mind of Christ. We, and it is revealed to the powers. And this power does not mean, you know, the dynamis power of God. This power refers to the celestial rulers or, you know, like, you know, the, uh, the archangels, archangels, uh, the demons and the territorial spirit. All these things. That's why we proclaim, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, you don't have any authority here. We, we make them know. We have to proclaim it. We have to declare that with our mouth. That who Jesus Christ is. I asked this question in the Sunday service the other day. Who is Jesus? Or what do you think Jesus Christ is? We, we have many answers. But more than that, the question we should be asking ourselves is, who is Jesus to you? We know who is Jesus. We have learned from the word of God. But we should be asking ourselves, who is Jesus Christ to us? That's again, it's about our relationship with him. So verse 10 very clearly reminds us that the church has the responsibility of teaching everyone about the manifold wisdom of God. And God created and equipped the church so that we could teach angels and demons. Oh wow. So we have to, we have a place here to teach even the demons and the angels as well, you know, with our life. How can we overcome the plan of the enemy? How can we be victorious over the power of the enemy? With our life we display that. You know, when a negative thought comes into our mind, what do, what do we do? We bring it down. Everything that rises up against the knowledge of Jesus Christ, we pull it down by obedience to the scriptures, by obedience to the word of God, by giving him the first place in our life. We show that we are no longer the, what we used to be. The powers of darkness knew Jesus is the son of God. And they thought the death of Jesus would be the end of God's plan of Redemption of the mankind. But Jesus, through his resurrection, death, burial and resurrection, he showed that it is not so. You know, there is this, uh, in, the, in the book of Psalms, Psalm 24, there is a scripture saying, uh, um, open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors and let the king of glory enter. I just heard a, I heard a man of God say one time, on this. Jesus after his death. He went down to. Uh, the, the Hades. As he was going. The, uh, uh, and they, they never expected Jesus Christ to be there. You know. To rise up from the. From, the, uh, from, from his death. And go there. To the. To whatever we call. You know the place where the people were kept. As Jesus Christ was coming. The, the powers of darkness. They saw him coming down. And they immediately started saying, let's close the door. This is just an imagination, okay? It's not in the Bible or anything. Just a wild imagination. Okay? They are just saying, close the door. But suddenly, just, you know, but you know, as you listen to this, suddenly the voice comes, O ye gates, open up O ye gates, let the king of glory enter. Are you getting what I am trying to say here? They were trying to close the doors on Jesus Christ. And suddenly, the noise, let's say, let's say loud voice comes and says, Open up big ancient gates. Open up ancient doors. Let the king of glory enter. King of glory went into that situation. He took the keys of death and hell and he came out of that place. The plan that enemy thought that they destroyed by crucifying Jesus Christ on the cross, he destroyed by his death on the cross. Hallelujah. The power of darkness thought they destroyed the plan of God. But Jesus Christ, through his death, burial and resurrection, he destroyed the plan of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 very clearly says, God put everything under the authority of Jesus Christ because of that. And he gave him as the head of the church. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 1, I am saying this. And then God gave Jesus as the head of the church. And we are the body of the, body of the church. And we are the church. 
if every authority is given to jesus christ who is the head of the church and if we are the body and everything is under his authority then everything is under our authority as well learn to exercise our authority learn to understand who we are in christ the purpose of revealing the mystery purpose of sharing the mystery is to make others to equip each one of us to be mature in the lord to bring them to the the salvation to, 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 to let them let everyone know that there is a way when you say there is no way we can say that there is a way in jesus christ that role is given to every one of us a great exchange happened on the cross not only he took care of our iniquities he gave authority he gave us power he changed our identity and he gave us everlasting life that is why you know we look at the mountain if you have we have we have done that many times we look at the mountain and say who are you mountain to stand before you go in the name of jesus christ from where did you get that authority where did you get that authority to speak to the problems in your life life and death are in the power of your tongues that we came to know as we learn the word of god as we came into the relationship with jesus christ exercise the authority that you have in the name of jesus christ and that is why paul wrote in the book of corinthians that if the powers of darkness had known the mysterious plan of god they would not have crucified the lord of glory and we are part of that victory procession you know that paul himself you know wrote in the book of corinthians again second um, corinthians chapter 3 he says you know you are the letter of my recommendation i would uh, make it in a different way our life your life and my life is the cv of god that others read the way you live the way you speak the way you behave you are re- re- uh, representing jesus christ there should be jesus christ in everything we do we are his cv just as we give or submit our cv to cv to an, an office when we go for an interview where we say you know like i have done this and that our life should be the cv of jesus christ so number 2 the purpose of revealing the ministry the mystery so that we can be his masterpiece we can be his cv in this world number 1 we are authorized to share this mystery to everyone number 2 we have a purpose in revealing this mystery we have to show this to everyone the people who are living around us as well number 3 there is the privilege of, uh, from this mystery because of christ and our faith in him we can now come boldly and confidently into god's presence oh this mystery transformed us changed our situation today we can come boldly and confidently into the presence of god because of what happened on the cross the privilege we have is jesus christ Uh, the, the confidence we have is Jesus Christ. We have the boldness to go before the Father in prayer. We have access to the throne of grace. And our boldness, our confidence is not on our prayer life. Or not on what we do. But it is in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus himself said, I am the way to the Father. I am the only way to the Father. And he said, you know, through, if you come through me. you can just go into his presence whenever you want and you can come out any time if anyone tries to come in through any other way and that person is a thief so we have the boldness to go into the presence of the father through jesus christ he removed the veil that separated people from entering into the holy place he made us holy and kingdom priest he made us holy and he said we are the priest now and now we have the access to the presence of the father as priest the first veil has been removed now we go into the second uh, first room and we minister as priest of the lord and through jesus christ we enter into the presence of the father because he already entered there and now we can go into the presence of the father as well but there's a day coming when we physically will be before him and we are waiting for that day to happen every creation is waiting for the day of the revelation of the children of god amen finally to be a servant we have to pay a price it's not being it's not easy you know to be a servant of god we have to pay a price the bible says we have to take up our own cross and we have to follow him 
we have to deny ourselves and we have to take up our own cross and follow him we have to deny ourselves means we have to stop depending on ourselves depending on draw strength from him and then take up our own cross be willing to suffer for the lord if you are called into this ministry as a minister of the lord as a servant of the lord be assured there will be challenges when you step into the ministry there will be distractions there will, you may go through situations but remember this there is light at the end of the tunnel it's all because of your dependence on jesus christ let's go to the next slide please the purpose of the church is to prepare the way for the lord to establish his kingdom on the earth the application part we need to remember this what do we have to do therefore therefore do not neglect our gathering together because you know we had to be careful you know we have to come together and worship the lord now the one of the purposes of coming together in a church is not only just sing some songs and listen to a message and go home no even we have to encourage each other we have to strengthen each other we have to build each other that is one of the purposes of coming to the church therefore do not neglect your gathering together encourage each other live in harmony and peace greet each other as god's people pronounce a blessing upon them and then the grace of the lord jesus christ and love of god the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit will be with us when we are careful with our spiritual life with our relationship with the people first of all our relationship with the lord being holy and then being blameless then we can experience the love of god the father and the grace of the lord jesus christ and the fellowship of the holy spirit and then we can be true witnesses for the lord so three things we saw number one we have been authorized remember this every one of us are authorized to share the good news to others Number 2 there's a purpose in sharing this good news to others we have to witness him everywhere the people who are living in darkness shall see the light in us and through us because we are his cv we are his masterpiece number 3 there's a privilege in 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 the, through this mystery that we have to reveal to others that we can go into the presence of the father boldly because of jesus christ when you read this put your name there i have written the uh, scripture there but when you read that personalize it and make it yourself Ma- make it yours remember uh, let's read it together god has given me use your name there okay god has given george whatever is your name god has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you this message was kept secret for centuries and generations past but now it has been revealed to god's people for god wanted us to know that the riches and glory of christ are for even for us also and this is the secret christ lives in you and this gives you the assurance of sharing his glory now verse 28 is very important for to have been sharing right now so we tell others about christ warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom god has given us why we want to present them to god perfect in their relationship to christ that is the calling of, of each one of us brothers and sisters that is the entire purpose of all this paul took time to speak to the people of god who thought them who considered themselves christians that there are certain riches and blessings for being a child of god which they did not realize so paul explained to them that every blessings in heavenly places has been given to you and he said the same power that raised jesus christ from the dead is living in you and god himself changed you around to be a new creation and god calls you his masterpiece and god has placed you as his cv or as his people who represent him in this world and then we saw in chapter 3 what are the responsibilities of a born again child of god that we have to be a true witness for him we have to re- display and we have to tell others the purpose of the uh, of serving jesus christ then we have to tell them about the privilege of serving jesus christ and going after him this morning if you are sure of that if you know if you understood what the lord of, word of god tells us let's thank the lord for, for a minute 
Lord we thank you for this morning Lord for reminding us Lord about the purpose of the mystery which you revealed to us Lord something which was hidden for generations but Lord today we understand that you have revealed it to us through your holy spirit and father you have made us partakers of your glory and this morning this is our assurance that Christ the hope of glory lives in us therefore we can be with you in glory one day Lord Lord we understand that the entire creation is waiting for the manifestation of the children of God and we be, we understand that Lord that because of your presence in our life because of our obedience to your instructions Lord we will be standing there with you Lord and we thank you for the transforming power in our lives father help us to be careful with our lives help us to be a true witness for you help us to walk out of here with, with boldness Lord and share the good news to others as well Lord we just praise you master we thank you lord for speaking to us this morning in jesus name we ask and pray amen praise god